Hi, this is Kirk Laughlin from Telecom TV Americas reporting to you from 4G World. Today we're talking with Chris Collins, a Yankee Group analyst. We want to talk today, Chris, about the concept of the smart pipe. We've sure. heard about it talked quite a bit today at the event. Tell us what that actually is. Well, it has come up quite a bit. A number of people, a number of conversations I've had, it's one of the first things to, to come out of their mouth. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're migrating from a dumb pipe to a smart pipe. And it, it's a little silly in my mind because it's one of those terms that's like jumbo shrimp. It just uh, doesn't really make sense. The pipe is what it is. It's what you do with it that makes it smart, though. And I think we're starting to see here a lot of new technologies and a lot of solutions that allow you to meter usage more accurately and provide monitoring of that usage so that a consumer can either adjust the plan that they're on dynamically so they can they can you know accommodate spikes in usage or they'll know when they need to sort of pull you know pull back on their usage because they're going to get overage charges i think adding that kind of intelligence is going to be important both for network operators cuz right now they don't have the capacity to satisfy demand and it's important for consumers who are much more vigilant about their spending and they need ways to sort of monitor what they're using on these devices and, and frankly most consumers just simply don't know. Chris, let's talk a little bit about the concept of cord cutting. Sure, sure. Where a lot more of the population, particularly in this country, says forget about the fixed line, I don't need that anymore. Yeah. Your prediction at the beginning of 2009 was you would see pretty dramatic cord cutting this year. Is it really happening to the pace you expect? It is happening, actually. It was, it was very interesting. We've been monitoring this concept of cord cutting for the past couple of years, and there's always been about 50% of the population that said, we're, we're never going to cut the cord. It's just too important for us in terms of our family safety or uh, you know, the reliability and the consistency of the service. But the other 50%, that, 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 the behavior of that group has changed quite a bit. And uh, in particular, we've seen about a quarter of the population People who had been on the fence, you know, thinking about oh, we might cut the cord, the next time we move we'll consider it. Those are people who are starting to change their behavior. We're actually seeing much greater rates of cord cutting among those consumers. I don't think we'll ever go above 50%, but mm -hmm. the fact that we've gone from say 10% now to 30% is pretty significant. Mm -hmm. It's significant for two reasons, obviously. One is fixed line carriers are losing, losing a lot of revenue. But more importantly, that money is using is going into other kinds of connected services. People are taking that money and they're using it to fund uh, more sophisticated devices, uh, unlimited data plans, maybe adding another line on their family plan. So total spend hasn't declined, but there's been a big shift from fixed services to more wireless services. Sure, sure. And as carriers take on more subscribers on the wireless side, we continue to see this practice of subsidies, yeah, which is beginning to hurt the bottom line, it appears. What, what's, your, what's your expectations there on carriers being able to recover more of that revenue opportunity? It's a huge uh, challenge for the industry right now, frankly. I mean, the, the, the best example of this is AT&T with the iPhone, which has been an enormously successful product, uh, generated enormous numbers of new subscriber uh, net ads for AT&T but their operating margins are going down and it's it's directly attributable to the very high subsidies that AT&T has to provide customers to buy those phones from Apple and then in turn give them to, to their, their customers at a discount. Uh, it's not sustainable uh, because as more consumers want uh, these high-end devices and as the competitiveness within the in industry increases and more people are looking for the best device at $79 a month or what have you, th it isn't sustainable. So we need to move away from uh, a model where it's all or nothing. If you're on a postpaid plan, you're getting a very highly subsidized phone, or you're on a prepaid plan with none of the advantages of the subsidy. We need to find more of those sort of hybrid models where people are paying perhaps a little bit more for the device, but they have a lot more contract flexibility over time. Interesting. All right, Chris Collins from Yankee Group, thank, thank you for you. joining us today.